and in typical life we start to feel like someone else i mean i beg on the street is a life this lady here what this god and mm. i felt like he was robbing me of so much so far have you learned anything from the part one of this interview i hope you're learning something i believe you have learned something i want you to sit down settle down and watch part two because we have more for you enjoy this episode and start sharing share with your friends share with your loved ones comment write to us we want to know what you're thinking what you're feeling and how this comment or this uh, interview is impacting your life thank you now let's talk about long post a lot yes. it is well yes. just not no. now this is a book you've journaled yes. about your grief yes and your mom's story and helping others how to navigate pain and yes. loss. I know it's a bit off topic yes. but I wanted us to talk mm-hmm. about it a lot. So mm-hmm. please what about it? So this one was an interesting one. This was meant to be the first long post. Mm-hmm. But in true Nyawira fashion, I trivialized the date, I trivialized it. It was ready before all the others. Oh. All of them. I was like, hmm. Not now. Not mm. just now. Just not now. And um, early this year, in I think is when I launched it. This was a very important one because in church I serve in the admin office, mm-hmm. and so during COVID we had gone for so many burials. People in church had lost their loved ones. Guys were just going through a hard time, and I remember going for all those to mashakayas and funerals, and always sitting there and wondering, mm. this is not being done right. Yeah, like. I mean, I, I bless the body of Christ because we are quick to bless you and tell you, no, no, you'll be well. It is well. It is well. Okay, it is well. Yeah, it is well. It is well. And I hated it because mm. I knew the feeling of loss. Yes. I hated being told it is well because I'm not okay. Mm. Stop forcing. Stop forcing. I'm not well. Yeah. Yeah. And so what happened with this one is that I collected a lot of research for it, wondering what words didn't I like. And so in the book, there are, there are different sections. There's yeah. um, the journaling element, and then there's the platitudes that mm. I hated. And I was like, here are some alternatives. Yeah. And sorry, sorry yes, to cut you short, mm-hmm. short, just to bring everyone else up to speed, mm-hmm. you, maybe you can tell us mm-hmm. your, your personal story, because oh, not everyone okay. has read this particular, yes. the intro of yes, this book. Yes. So yeah. in 2013, mm. I lost my mom to cancer and she was a beautiful soul i i was raised in a very loving home um my dad loving to bits my siblings i'm the last one mm. so i have many parents before me <laughs> but i remember my mom's journey into her sickness and how she bore it so strongly mm. at the time i was 19 and i remember how difficult it was for us during that season because I kept on feeling like this was not the person who should have gone. And in typical life, we start to feel like someone else. I mean, I beg on the street, is there like this lady here, what's this God? And mm. I felt like he was robbing me of so much. And so I, I watched the season of her life coming to end and I remember the week before she passed on, on that Sunday we had gone to the hospital and we had gone to give blood with my friends and so we were giving blood and when we went i went to see, i said oh you guys go let me go and see her before i leave but that time she already she was already in a coma and i remember seeing her convulsing and i was looking at the nurses like you're just gonna stand there what are you doing and i raised so much hell mm. but what i didn't realize was that the stage of grief called acceptance would take a very long time for me and so i struggled in that no i did i struggled with reconciling the fact and so i remember that day it was the 26th of april at around 4 p.m 4 5 p.m i got the call from my family in the morning and they're like you know when you come to the hospital um your mom needs a scan i was like a scan why do you need me all of why do you all of you need me there and you know when god is telling you something but you don't want it to be what you want to hear i could feel god saying mm, this thing isn't looking good but i was fighting him so I, re- I went, I sat, I sat, I found first, I got into the hospital and I found my entire family extended all in the parking lot. And they were like, hey, we need to go see your mom because they've officially declared her brain dead. Mm. Now, growing up, one of the things my mom always said was that at the point of being, being brain dead, if my brain cannot work, there's nothing we're doing, just leave it. And I mean, it used to be a light joke because you'd say, if I can't think, I can't work. And 
So when I heard that, I was like, yeah, it's time. And so we went to the hospital, into her bed, and we all stood there. And so all my siblings had been there before me, and so they knew it. Mm. And so the doctor said it so categorically. He said her brain is dead, and so what's going to happen is they're going to turn off the life support, and her heart will keep beating, but then stop. So I looked at the doctor, I was like, stop what? What are, what are you saying? What are you saying? And we stood there with um, my aunt, who's a pastor, a reverend, and my sisters and my brother and my dad. And she said, it's time for us to pray and just release her. So I opened my eyes and I looked at everybody else, like everybody was praying and everybody was still in the zone. And I was like, what, what are you guys doing? Like, what are you really doing? True to it, she transitioned. Now. When we finished that prayer, we went into the to the parking lot, as typical Kikuyu families. We all began gathering around a car to plan now the whole thing. Like, everybody go to the house now, others go figure out what picture we're going to use. And I think that conversation didn't settle right with me. So I said, you know what, you guys go ahead. Let me go inside. I'm going to sit at the ICU until they wheel her out. And so I sat there. And I sat there for long. Mm -hmm. I think it was like almost two hours. But in my heart, I kept on wondering, could this have been the fighting time? Like, did, did uh, we say yes quickly? So fast. Uh, did, we, did we switch it off? But then, in a strange way, I felt like God was saying, it's fine, just let it go. But him saying it doesn't mean I accepted it. Yes. It, mm -mm. So I went in the hospital, I looked at her bed and was, they had really removed her body, and now they're taking it to their mortuary. And so I, my friends told me, why don't you come? So everybody had left, because mm. everybody went home. But I told my family I wanted to stay and I'll come back home on my own. So I told my friends, I'm going to meet you guys in town. So they told me we're coming to the hospital. I said, no, let me come meet you in town. So we mm. went to town. We sat there. I found them. So they're like, ah, you, I'm sure you haven't eaten. Why don't you go and eat? So I sat there and we were trying to eat fries. But for the life of me, I kept on telling them this story. It, I couldn't, I couldn't talk properly. And so they're like, ah, I told them, you know what, you guys, thanks. But I think it's time for me to go home. So they're like, okay, we'll take you. I was like, no, 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 no. I want to go home. And so I got into a bus, and at the time we were staying at Valley Arcade. And so I got into a bus, and I entered the bus, and I dropped off at Valley Arcade Shopping Center because from there to home was like almost five, 400 meters. It wasn't too far, so I walked. But in the bus, I was like, I was just, you know, typical, like weird girl behavior. Mm. I was just in the bus crying. So, yeah. so everybody's looking at me like, <laughs> It must be like a boyfriend. Yeah. But no, it wasn't. <laughs> I wish yeah. I could tell them. But I was so broken. I got out of the bus. I walked all the way to the house. And I got into the house and I'm seeing so many people. Mm. I was like, oh, God. So I went to the kitchen. My aunts are forcing food down my throat. They were like, you have to eat. I was like, mm, just chill. So I went to the couch and I sat down. I was watching my dad. He was already looking for pictures. So I sat down and I looked at everybody in the room. I can already tell. I can't even tell you how that room smelled like. Mm. Like it was, I could. I can't remember that much detail. But I sat there, and I listened to. So my sister came and sat with me, and I told her, "Hey, yeah, this is what happened." I saw them wheeling her, and then my sister said, "Oh man, now this is what we're going to be talking about for a long time." So I was like, "Yeah, that's actually true. We're going to be talking about the fact that we lost our mom young," and we sat there. We they left. The house was empty because my dad went to bed. So I sat in the house, I was like, wah. I remember I watched Madagascar, that cartoon, like I think four times, yeah? Because every time I close my eyes, I just see it, like what, what is happening? And my mind was on overdrive. The next morning I woke up at like a, a weird hour, I think it was around five or, five or thereabout. And I began to clean the house, saying people are coming. And they're gonna start coming, they have to find the house clean. So my dad wakes up and is like, eh? <laughs> mm. And I was like, they're coming, let them come. True to it at 7 a.m. There were people already in the house. Yeah. That whole journey, and I, I really celebrate my friends in that season because every day of that entire week, people slept over, people spent time with me, people, I never felt alone. And that blinded my processing of grief. Mm. Because in my head, I was like, I'm hosting people. I can't be the somber one all the time. And they came, and so we had the funeral, and we moved on. Ten years later, only this year, God willing, in December, is when I'll go and see her grave. I have never gone. Wow. Why? Because acceptance takes time. Mm. And I think this year is when I have come to terms 
and come to the reality of Ten it. Years Ten later. years later. And so you've written here that, mm -hmm. you know, there are stages of grief. Yes. Um, and that, you know, it's different for different people. Correct. Different people process things differently, mm -hmm. you know. What was the first stage? The um, bargaining. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and Denial, actually, it, the first one. Exactly. Yes. And then you say it's it's different. Mm. Some people even skip. It's not even in any order. Can you list the four stages yes. for there's us, denial, for the viewers? Mm. There's bargaining. Yeah. There's anger. Yeah. That one is a painful one. Mm. There is definitely accept. Bargaining, and then there's now uh, um, acceptance. Yeah. Of all of these, many people think that I'll start with denial, and then I'll go into, and then it doesn't. There are people who the the bounce between accepting and denying mm. the people who bargain but they really are angry yeah and all those seasons i saw you even wrote that some people can be angry twice like you can yes. be here yes. then you move yes. then you become angry then you move back again. <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> because it's like a big bouncing yes then when you yes. wake up one morning you're feeling like ah, i wish my mom was here then a few hours Should later, have me with this. I, I'd have thought yes. about this with her. A few hours later, you sit down and you tell yourself, hmm, I'm happy that she's not. I'm happy that she's not in pain. Mm. And so you ask yourself, and unfortunately, sometimes you feel guilty for being for accepting it. Yeah. You tell yourself, am I, am I okay with what, I, what am I being okay with? Mm. And so for all of those seasons, God gives you different grace and different strength. But I think today I... I recognize that God has given me a lot of peace wow. in that journey. And so, and again, it wasn't for me. No, look at this material. It is it's for, for someone it else. It is for everyone. <laughs> yes. I mean, your personal experience, and I'm very sorry about your mom. Yes. You know, your personal experience and now serving in church mm. and seeing other people and, and noticing this is not how it's done. Or maybe this, yes. you could have said this better. And you're giving some really nice steps mm. here that, you know, they are really highlighted. Yes. It's the things, what to do, what to and not to say to a person who is grieving. Yes. I mean, since you are Christ, we all know <laughs> <laughs> how we behave around you know loss loss oh. you want to just make it look like it is well you don't yeah. even you know sometimes it's it's we don't even know what to exactly. say exactly sometimes if you've not been in a situation you you really have you have nothing to and say. And then some people have lost so many people and so many things in their lives mm -hmm. that it's so normal that they tell you out of to sour. Yes. You know, I've had I have had all sorts of insensitive things <laughs> in as much as it's it could be distant but i'm thinking you didn't have to say that just yes. because you lost three exactly. siblings don't tell someone else exactly. that mm -hmm. and i think the most painful you know? one i read was mm. i think in the news whether it was this year or last year a pastor who had taken a lady through many burials of her unborn children she yeah. had born children she bore a steel child mm. one lived a month or two i think she was on her fourth child now yeah. and the doctor the pastor outrightly said that i you're still young enough to give birth to more uh, and i that i watched that news and i like i felt you're cringed <laughs> oh yo 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 you're not the pastor not the pastor mm. not the pastor <laughs> somebody else someone else the bible says my people perish because yes. of lack of knowledge and you see no one is exempted exactly. in that statement exactly so there's a lot of things here what mm -hmm. not to say yes. how are you doing mm. instead say it's really tough right now for yes. you what not to say they're in a better place mm. Who what told is, you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, aren't we here with you? Are you there with them? How do you know it's better? How do you know it's better? Exactly. How do you know they're in heaven? But who told you they're there? <laughs> <laughs> you know what to say instead? Yes. I'm sorry you're suffering. Exactly. Mm -hmm. hey, this is like from your, it's it's heart to heart. It what is. you've experienced with your mom and the yes. people around you and also what you've watched over time. There's also here what not to say. You can always, mm -hmm. you know, what to say instead, tell me about your loved one. Exactly. Tell me about this. Mm. How does feeling someone else telling you about their loved one, mm. uh, you know, help in any way when you're grieving? If you lose someone, for example, Danu, mm. if I ask you to tell me what you loved about them, yeah, you feel like we're connecting. Wow, yeah. Because in that moment, you, you don't focus on them being dead. Mm. You focus on what you loved about them. Mm. That should be enough. Yeah, they loved Rose. Exactly. Loved... Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So tell me tell me about this loved one. Tell me about them. Mm. Let's and talk that's about a big them. one for the church because mm. we go for Masha Kayaks and we say, this person was a good person. 
What exactly? Don't. And I think for me, if the order mm. was to be done different, let the people speak before the pastor speaks. Mm. Let people share what they loved about them. Wow. Yeah. Then when the pastor shares this context. I think it's only in movies that we actually see people, mm. uh, you know, make it light and just give some nice exactly. memories about but their loved ones. So they it are, does help. Yes. They lived in that, mm. no? Let them live in that moment. Yes. Yeah. That I'm happy to know that helps. There's mm -hmm. one that really I have heard that it was something about mm -hmm. uh, I understand. Mm. Yeah. I know how it feels. I know how it feels. <laughs> and uh, where was that? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I know how you feel. Mm -hmm. And what to say instead, I can imagine how you're feeling. Mm. That's a big one. Yeah. I have many friends who've lost their parents, mm. whether a mother or a father. But even for them who've lost their mom, I still cannot tell you I know how it feels. Yeah. Your relationship with the parent is individual. Mm. There are some people who have no relationship with their mothers. Yes. And they'll still cry at the funeral. Mm. Why? They know what they've lost. I don't. So I can only imagine you what you're imagine. feeling. Yeah. And that should be enough. You can say, I understand you. What do you understand? Hey, you don't know the level of loss someone is going through. And that's also a big one in this month where people are, celeb are remembering mothers who've lost children. Mm. Is to always say, I know, I can only imagine what you're feeling. Because people assume that mothers, because they haven't held their child, have no connection. Yes. But nine months, I carried you. Even I felt two. you. Even people even cry two. over a miscarriage. Exactly. You feel it is a loss. Exactly. It is a loss. So you don't, feel it. don't ever make anyone's loss inferior. Uh -huh. That's now also in church that happens. Exactly. Okay, everywhere generally. Yes. People feel like, you know, some, a, yeah, it's not as bad. Yeah. Not as bad. Uh, he was 90. Come on, I, I, let him I, I, die. Exactly. What? No! <laughs> he was my person. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so be kind, be kind, be kind. This book is really, really nice. I mean, if you have someone who, you know, I think it's it's for everyone. It is. You don't necessarily need to be having someone who's griefing in your life mm -hmm. to like read this this is helpful to even know how to relate and understand other people exactly. and i like that you highlighted it is different things because yes. even as our main topic is about career yes. changes and navigating things mm -hmm. man when you lose a business mm. woo, or your time is not coming yes there's a loss there's just something you know only that this is centered more on losing your loved ones yes. but i think it's a good book so mm. nyawera Hey, Asante. Thank, you, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thanks thank for you for me. writing. Yes. Thank you for journaling your thoughts. Mm. I am very motivated to learn that all this has happened in just a nick of time. You know, mm. the way the Bible says it will happen. It will mm -hmm. just be like, you know, within the blink of an a twinkle, a twinkling of an mm. eye. Mm. It's something that, you know, your story looks like something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sort of, mm -hmm. you know. So Asante Sana. Thank you, Ndano. Do you have any parting shots? Well, I don't have many parting shots, but now that we're here, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, just be encouraged. I think the seasons of life are seasons just like any other. They come and they go. Mm. Don't let, don't stay in one season. Yeah. And another one has come. Mm. But also just to encourage you that be around people who also are good for your season. Yes. Yeah. I know you could be a season of increase, but everybody around you is the season of struggle. Mm. They keep telling you how you should be struggling with them or they talk down on your increase. Yeah. Get out. Or they make you feel like you're thinking too big. Exactly. Which is a very Galea nasty, you. it's a very nasty way <laughs> of <laughs> living. <laughs> Mm, what's that? Who is this? You don't deserve anything. But the yeah. truth is, is that surround yourself with like-minded people. Wow. But one of my best, best thoughts about this career thing, and I thought about it when you told it to me, was that in the Bible, God actually encourages us that even though we are waiting, mm. yeah, that our strength will be renewed. Amen. So that waiting, you will be uh, weak in it. That's you will be strengthened. Desire. Yes. Mm. So they that wait on the Lord shall have their strength renewed. Yes. So he's not telling you they that shall be blessed of the Lord. It's the ones who are waiting. You're waiting. Yeah. yeah. And think about we're waiting on Jesus. Yes. And our strength in him is being renewed. And the Bible is big on waiting. Exactly. Sarah a, waited. Oh, oh Hannah. Oh, let's oh my talk God. About all of them. <laughs> Everyone all of waited. Them. I think everybody waits. Yeah. But the thing is, don't rush it. Just yes. for the taking longer, don't rush it. Mm. Aki, if you rush it, it messes everything up. And so I'm still in my season of waiting. Also. Yeah. I'm waiting on God for certain things 
to come through. Mm. I'm so far from what I dream of. Yes, you talked about mm. the four things that Pastor George yes, taught you. Yes. So I uh, we're waiting for number four now. When that one probably. comes. <laughs> I actually bad though. I'm still in shine. You're still in number two. I'm still in shine. But, but, but ikipika iyo time ya destiny. Ooh. Oh God. <laughs> oh God, you hear your daughter. You hear her. You hear her. Thank you so, but so encouraged. much. Yeah. Asante sana. So I'm going to give this away mm -hmm. oh. to anyone who if you're navigating your career life changes, mm -hmm. you still feel like you really need a lot of encouragement and identity stuff, this is the one for you. I've read it, but I've written nothing mm. inside. So put in the comments below why you need this book. You can recommend it to your friend as well. You can write why they need it yes. and we'll give it to you. We'll figure out how you get it. And then this other one, if you're going through grief or a friend is really having a tough time right now, mm. this is available for them. So yeah, just write, give us the details and we'll be able to send the book. You don't have to give so many details. Mm -hmm. I believe you will be able to just to you connect know, if you if have to if you know it is necessary and yeah. they really really need it just write i have someone and they really need it mm. thank you so much thank you so much for watching to the end this is the priscilla and Danu show i am that priscilla girl my guest nyawera here we have had an amazing time and we want you to take your phone right now and start sharing this content to your loved ones with your friends anyone who you think would benefit from this information please share this message with them remember to subscribe and put the notification button on so that you can watch our next videos every wednesday Stay at three thirty. Bye.